Hi, I'm Hog, this is The Dice, and you're watching Hogwash, where I give my opinions on aspects of pop culture in the vain hope that anybody actually cares about what I have to say. Dice Gods, what is today's topic? I liked Ant-Man. I thought Paul Rudd's portrayal of Scott Lang was likeable and entertaining. I thought his dynamic with most other characters was pretty compelling. But both Scott and Hope raised a question that was ringing through my mind throughout the entire movie. Why did they need Scott at all? Hope Van Dyne slash Pym is a highly intelligent, highly capable woman. She already understands how the technology behind the suit works. She can already communicate with the ants. She has a close working relationship with the villain Darren Cross. And she is so capable a fighter that Scott's martial training is left to her rather than Hank who fought in literal war zones for S.H.I.E.L.D. Yes, Hank Pym, played by Michael Douglas, does say that he wants Scott for his burglary skills, but Scott barely makes use of those skills. Really, he mostly relies on fighting and talking to the end. Assume formation. All right, you cute little crazies. Let's fry these servers which are two skills that were taught to him by Hope in the first place. The justification for sending Scott, despite the fact that Hope is clearly more qualified, is that Hank doesn't want to lose Hope in the same way that he lost his wife, Janet. The problem with this is that the only reason for the kind of but not really death of Janet Van Dyne is to give Hank justification for not wanting to put Hope in the suit. But the only justification for Hank not wanting to put Hope in the suit is the death of Janet, but the death of Janet is only there to give Hank justification and you see where I'm going with this. It's a major contortion of the story just for the sake of putting Scott in the suit. This is further undermined when it's revealed that Janet isn't dead at all, and that people can return from the quantum realm. Though, everyone please feel free to join me for a collective groan if Janet eventually emerges as the villainous Red Queen. Not to mention the fact that there's no real emotional conflict between Scott and Darren Cross, played by Corey Stahl, throughout most of the movie. They're mostly total strangers who don't really meet until near the end. On the other hand, Hope and Cross have known and worked closely together for several years. There's a real sense of emotional background between them, whatever it is their relationship was. Which wasn't clear, and I actually liked that it was never made fully clear what their relationship was. But you do feel a sense of mutual betrayal when they find themselves on opposite sides. In the end, Darren Cross ends up feeling more like Hope's nemesis than Scott's. In a way, this feeling of misplaced focus leads to a feeling of major catharsis during the mid credit scene. When Hank shows Hope the unfinished Wasp costume, she says it's about damn time. And that really vented a lot of frustration for the audience. Because yes, it was about damn time. I also can't help but wonder how much time could have been saved if Hank and Hope had simply finished the Wasp costume instead of training Scott. As well as that, the costume can already fly by itself. So that would have even removed a layer of complexity from their eventual plan. The focus on Scott also seems to distort Scott's character arc. Scott begins the movie in prison because he stole millions of dollars from his former employers so that he could return it from their customers that they had stolen it from in the first place. 
Scott is a modern-day Robin Hood, and yet his heroic journey is framed as a redemption arc. This makes absolutely no sense. Scott had already proven himself to be a kind of hero. His reluctance to return to crime after getting out of prison from literally robbing from the rich to give to the poor underscores that he already has a strong moral character. Just for the sake of reference, this would be like making Captain America go through a redemption arc because of all of the government property he destroyed in Winter Soldier, thus breaking the law. Ant-Man was a good movie, but it felt like it had to bend over backwards and go through all sorts of strange story contortions to be about Ant-Man. I suppose we can only hope that the sequel will focus more on the Wasp, and actually that's probably not just hope at this stage, seeing as the sequel has been titled Ant-Man and the Wasp. Hopefully the inevitable third installment will simply be titled The Wasp. Though, then again, I suppose putting the focus entirely on Janet prevents them making ant puns. And it's much harder to make puns about wasps when you're not talking about white Anglo-Saxon Protestants. And the movie really doesn't work without insect-related punning. Apparently.